So a lot of people have been asking me about how to uh, infuse their organization, their business, or their classroom or school with the, the idea of growth mindset, how to cultivate a culture of growth mindset. And I think this is so fantastic. I'm so excited that people are understanding and learning about it and getting excited about it. Um, but there is a really, really important thing that I think people need to talk about and understand before, and I would even argue instead of talking about growth mindset. Um, and so what I, I'm going to talk about that at the end of this video, but first I just want to explain why I think it's been somewhat difficult in some ways to spark and cultivate this idea of growth mindset. Um, and one of those is that it's um, becoming a, a bit of a buzzword, a little bit overused, and I think used in ways and by people who have not necessarily really understood and reflected on it um, as deeply as they could. And so what people have been doing, I see, is they are learning about it um, and they're skipping right to trying to teach it or uh, force it onto people. Um, and they have skipped over the internalizing process. And so um, one thing that we see in the research is that, for example, if a teacher, some teachers are, Carol Dweck is calling this the false growth mindset. They are using the terminology, they're doing all the things on the checklist about promoting growth mindset, but when you observe the behavior in the classroom, it's clear that they have not really um, internalized it and it's not really being reflected in their behavior. They're still writing students off, they're still stereotyping, they're labeling, they're not truly believing a student's ability to develop and change their brain and, and um, promote their own ability to develop their talents. So, uh, so we're seeing that, and then the problem is when, it, when even if somebody's speaking about, about growth mindset, but they're not really internalizing it in, and infusing it in how they behave towards other people, for example, with students, we see those students then um, adopting fixed mindset behavior. Um, so, so that's the first thing. I'm see we're seeing that people are learning about it, and they know about it, but they don't know it, and they haven't really reflected and internalized on their own process and their own um, possibility of taking something where they feel like they're really afraid of failure and then pushing through that. So that's number one. Number two is um, we're using it now, I'm seeing it being used as a way to judge people and categorize and label people. Um, so we are kind of almost getting away from the whole idea of what this is supposed to be about, which is empowering people with the deep knowing, the unshakable knowing that you can develop your own potential, you can push through things and tackle them and you can figure things out. Um, so we're, we're losing a bit of sight of that and we're going into a labeling and a, a judging thing when we're using this. So that's number two that I see. And so I think it's bringing up some resistance about this idea. And then number three, um, we're trying to teach something on a kind of a conceptual level. We're using checklists and behavior, which is really just a surface thing, to try and, ins what we really need to be doing is inspiring aha moments, inspiring new ways of seeing, because a mindset is a way of perceiving things. It's a way of seeing, um, a, a, me making meaning about failure, making meaning about intelligence. And those are things that are learned, those are beliefs. That's what a mindset is. And that comes from our experience interacting with our own, with very small, limited environments. And so what we need to understand is that it's not about explaining on a conceptual level about mindset and talking about it and checking things off a list. It's about really getting to a point of a, a bit of a breakthrough and having an aha moment. And that can really only come from someone who really knows how to model it and has truly internalized it. So this is more about modeling and infusing a way of seeing potential and intelligence rather than talking about growth mindset and doing all that stuff. So what I think needs to be talked about before talking about growth mindset is a concept called neuroplasticity which is our brain's um, nature. It's plastic, it's changeable, it's malleable, but way more important than that, that's just the way our brain is. And some of us are, our brain has been formed through our interactions with our environment, so it's been happening on kind of a default way. 
Um, way more important is a term called self-directed neuroplasticity, which is that we can intentionally choose how to train our mind and, and form new pathways, form new networks, activate it in new ways. So it's a self-directed process. It's intentional, um, and it's a way of, of taking the nature of our brain, which is malleable, but choosing how to use it in new ways. So that is what I think needs to be talked about a lot more this idea of self-directed neuroplasticity and neural pathways and how how those get formed and how we can reform them in whichever way we we can we choose so um that's what i want to talk about in the next few videos and um i hope that you find them helpful thanks